Booze and Barbecue. Hello and welcome to another Boost Booze and Barbecue. This is Andy. Taking second chair, as always, is Coyce and Masterson. How are you doing? Great, Andy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. We've got a third chair today. Kevin Getline. Hi, ho How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm currently full of pork and a little bit of uh, single malt scotch whiskey. Now you're talking. So, Kevin is a chef. He works for a restaurant called Recipe Part Dua, because it's French and you got to kind of stick your tongue out. Maybe, maybe like hold your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's like you, you swallow the X mm-hmm. as part D. Do I've you never swallow or do you bite the sides of your tongue? Well, I mean, I always when I'm trying to say French words, pretend I'm singing a Green Day song. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like pinching your nose shut or just like you're swallowing your tongue. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. No. Well, it, French works. is the language of love if you're high on mushrooms. Which is always, right? Yes, yes. No, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited to have the good chef here. We appreciate him coming down. Where's your restaurant? Uh, it's in Newburgh, Oregon, Yamhill County. Newburgh is getting very upscale, very hipstery, a little bit of... It's in the heart of wine country in Oregon, so it's a little bit more upscale. I would almost say it's like the new heart of wine country in Oregon. It seemed like more Mid-Valley was where it was at 10 years ago or so, and it's really came along in the... Uh, the wine country stuff right now, and now it's hipstery go to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. make all the wines fast they can out there. Yep. Well, but here's the good news: you get in a real hipstery area with a good restaurant, and that restaurant gets to make just about anything that they want. And as we've learned in the past, when you've got a good cook at the helm, making just about anything you want means that you're going to get some really, really tasty food. Yeah, we got to do a lot of fun stuff out there. It's uh, it's really cool, and there's so much like locally sourced ingredients that are readily available to us like we really get to play especially like rolling through all the different seasons so mm-hmm. it's, that menu's constantly changing we're constantly playing with like new ideas and new stuff and it's a lot of fun i love that area for that there's so much agriculture and it, everything can be sourced locally and all that means is that your ingredients are are just next level absolutely 100 percent how do you guys how do you guys do your menu? It's got to be revolving or part of it stays the same, part of it you're always trying something new? Uh we do have a few staple items that kind of are always going to be there, but we do like to try and like change up the plating or preparation on them. For summer this instance, we have a our, one of our staple items is a burrata. It's a creamy mozzarella stuffed inside of a firmer mozzarella. Mm-hmm. And over the summer we're serving it with like fresh tomatoes and Arbicanya olive oil and cool stuff like that. But rolling in a winter, tomatoes go out of season. So now we're going to be serving it. Uh, well, this is unofficial still, but I'm trying to get uh, something like maybe shaved persimmons and uh, smoked prosciutto, like something a little more winter oriented. I like sense. that. Yeah. I love prosciutto. And now that I'm thinking about that with persimmons. Yeah. Right. See, this is why you're, you're a professional chef and I'm just a home cook. Like, that's where the difference is. This guy is able to sit down and go, hey, what are some of the seasonal favorites? What are some of these things that are going to take people back to their childhood when they eat it? Because that's really what we're looking for when we're eating good food. Like, if we're going out to a good, good restaurant, we like to be surprised, but we also like to have that homey familiarity. Absolutely. 100%. That's um, something that people don't really talk about too much, but but it seems like something that you embrace. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be successful in the industry, you have to, at least like with the crowd you're trying to attract, be approachable. Mm-hmm. And if you're trying to attract people that are in their like mid-30s to early 40s or that that like kind of younger but matured crowd, like you can't be coming at, at them with all of this ridiculous French terminology and stuff like that just because it's it's unapproachable. People look at the menu, they're like, I got no idea what this is, mm-hmm. and then walk away. They're wondering which is the snails. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, you do something like, you know, have on the menu like a slider. People see the word slider, and they're like, oh, cool. I know what a slider is. It's a miniature sandwich. But then you can do like a traditional like croque Stuff mas- it with frog yeah. legs. Cro- exactly or what a, I croque do. monsieur. You know, like you do a slider. <laughs> call it a croque slider. And it's got, you know, bechamel and ham and Swiss cheese with smeared Dijon mustard. But if you were trying to sell just a croque monsieur, like nobody this is going to be like, what is a croque? Like, Wait, that sounds- you have a croque slider that does not have frog legs in it. That is that is correct. Okay. Obviously, you see where you've made a mistake and you need to change it, <laughs> self-correct this as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, 
that's that's actually not even on our menu yeah that's just something i'm kind of toying around with for now but I, I think it'll make it on there in the next couple of weeks we'll see i have to get approval from our from our owner but he pretty much lets me lets me roll so. oh yeah well that's the beauty of being the head chef sorry there's a french term for your position it's not exactly executive chef because you are the operator correct yeah my my official title is chef de cuisine there we go. Chef de cuisine. I, you know what? I like that better than head chef anyways. Yeah, it sounds way more fancy pants anyway, so, yeah, which sounds... I'm all about. So, <laughs> so how, how do you roll about getting your approval? Just phone call, picture, um, or does he have to physically taste these items? I mean, I love to show off, so I'll definitely, like, if I have something that I can easily, like, do a small batch or a one-off of, um, I'll bring it to him to taste. But for the most part, I mean, I've known, I've known our owner for a, a little while now, and... He trusts my palate as long as he likes the idea. If it doesn't sound like crazy off to him, he, he usually just lets me go with it. So when when you get approval for these, do you go ahead and, and do the math on what the price should be for this and, and break that down? Because, I mean, it's a restaurant. you gotta you got to clear a profit. Yeah, you know, traditionally that's the way to do it. Like you got you got your spreadsheet. Like you go to any like big big restaurants, you've got what's called food cost, and you you cost out all of your ingredients. You get your yields, your cost per ingredient and per portion, and figure out and adjust your price for uh for profitability. But we're so small that we kind of just like do a more of a profit and loss sheet, like. We know roughly what everything's costing, and we kind of just a little more off the cuff. So I feel you, like you kind of set the prices yourself, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just—I mean, I'll go over it with him. He—he he usually is the—he—he'll tell me how much to sell it for, yeah, or to keep keep what I want like within a certain price range. But you can always adjust like portion size and stuff like that to make like little little adjustments and stuff mm-hmm. to a uh, price or portion. Well, sure, and that's super popular anyways, you know, getting like the wooden spoon that comes out with a single bite on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what do they call that? Uh, the amuse-bouche. Oh, yeah, there you the go. The amuse-bouche to like entice the palate. It's like a pre, pre-appetizer pre starter. It's not even a tapas because a tapas is, is a small plate, but like it, it's something. I mean, stuff like this is, like you said, a, a palate enticer. Yeah, like... You really only see stuff like that at like super upscale restaurants where you get seated and that's the first thing they bring you, you know, after you get your drink order in or whatever, they'll, Mm -hmm. they'll bring you an amuse. But, um, typically it's like not even a bite or a half a bite. It's like, you'll get like a little bit of like some sort of vegetable puree with like a toasted pine nut and like Mm -hmm. a couple of flakes of sea salt on it. And that'll be that. You know, I was thinking, Koi, if you had a fancy pants restaurant like that and you were doing the single spoon thing, I'd do it on a hatchet. That's where you're going, right? <laughs> it, it wasn't, but that's a good one. Oh. That's a good one. I was thinking like a soup spoon with a bent handle so that the soup spoon sits up, and then that pumpkin spice rum in the mm. spoon, and just, you're just like, that's just how you do your shot. Rum. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. how you do your shot. That'd be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I was thinking as you're talking about the spoon thing with Oregon and hipsters and you know flannels and all that, mm-hmm. we get a bunch of hatchets. You know, you get them like a little little uh, New York strip or something on there, or back to the frog legs. Just gonna keep throwing frog legs at you. Yeah, you hit that. You hit that hatchet with the blowtorch. Throw something on there so it's got some sizzle. So bring it out to him. Just a, some meat on a hatchet right there. Oh, that's just selfies, <laughs> Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like your little place is gonna blow up. I'm gonna hit those with a grinder and dole them because as soon as somebody's done eating, they're, you they're know gonna try and chop dr- something or, or drop, drop it, it on their foot. Yeah. yeah. So it's still it's gonna hurt. It's a hatchet, but dole it a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. not so mm-hmm. much as obvious, but. Yeah, sure. So it'll, like you said, it'll still hurt, but you know, you're going to walk away at least with all of your appendages. Yeah, there'll, there'll be less blood. Okay. For sure. But yeah, hit that thing with the little, little Mm blowtorch, little butane Mm -hmm. torch. Hit it with that sizzle sauce that they use on, (laughs) on like fajitas, you know? And throw Uh, some frog legs or something on there. Vegetable oil. (laughs) (laughs) Not to get technical or anything. Sizzle sauce sounds a lot cooler. Yeah, I think that would totally go over in our little upscale, like, boutique bistro restaurant. I'm just sizzle, hitting you with ideas. Sizzle sauce. Hitting you with ideas. Maybe throw in a side of ranch dressing while we're at it. <laughs> I'm feel, feeling some pushback here. <laughs> these good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Okay. But leave the sauce off, but the hatchet's a good idea. I do I do like the hatchet or, you know, a knife or something like that. Like, yeah. I mean, I feel like a hatchet yeah. would be kind of unwieldy. You got this big counterweight, like, on the end of, well, like, I'd a little... put it rounder. on, like, a wooden plate or something so they didn't actually have to, like, eat it off the hatchet. Okay. I mean... Because I don't know how you cleanse a hatchet... Can't really just throw that in the autoclave if it has a wood handle. No, well, that, obviously you just fire it. 
hold it over an open fire. Because well, I, I assume technically this restaurant... the butane torch mm-hmm. is cleansing it to some mm-hmm. extent. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about this whole. Life. I mean, I like it. I think I might do that at home. <laughs> you know, like first date, girl okay. comes over, yeah, bring her out some steak on a hatchet. Yeah. It's like, hey, I might murder you later. <laughs> I'm super manly <laughs> and a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, more creepy than usual. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I look pretty creepy. <laughs> like, I mean, there's no, there's no getting around. Yeah, it. no, like, you look, you definitely look like a chef. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is creepy. Yeah. It's <laughs> hand in hand, right? <laughs> hey, let's swing it back around to the pumpkin spice for a second because mm. we got a couple mm-hmm. of beers to make our way through. Yeah. All right. Koi's got a lineup for us. What's coming first, my friend? Well, you brought me in some Night Owl pumpkin ale from uh, Elysian, and it looks delicious because it says pumpkin on it. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, you haven't had this before either. Uh, no, I have not. I've had a couple of pumpkin ales before, but. In my experience, they can vary. Oh, yes. This one I think you're going to enjoy. Elysium's not super big. They're not super small either. I mean, there are a lot of people that know of them. They make a pretty good product. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And, gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. I'm watching your faces. Oh, yeah. This is great. It's really good. That is spicy. Mm Mm-hmm. It's got lots and lots of all the pumpkin spices that you like. I'm watching Koi's face. He is in absolute ecstasy right now. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so. Is there actual pumpkin in this, too? Yeah. As the reigning expert on pumpkin spice, at least in this room, I feel like I could say that. When it comes to beers, they'll do it. It'll have pumpkin on it. They'll either go with an actual, like, pumpkin flavor. The actual, actual, you know, vegetable tastes like raw pumpkin, Mm -hmm. which I'm not a huge fan of. They'll do the spice, which is not so much pumpkin, but more all the spices you'd get in a pumpkin pie. Or you'll get one that tastes like pumpkin pie. It's real sweet. This is right in the middle there. With I taste all the spice, not a ton of pumpkin. Mm-hmm. The pumpkin kind of comes to mind because it's all the all the spices that you get in pumpkin, but mm-hmm. or in a pumpkin pie, I should say. But that's very good. It's not like super sweet, but real spicy with all the right spices. Yeah, that's the issue I've had with pumpkin spice ales is e- either they're just they're all spice and no like there's no like. Like you said, like hearkening to that actual pumpkin flavor, mm-hmm. or they're cloyingly sweet and yeah, taste like something yeah. that you should I be feeding one. your sixteen-year-old girlfriend when you're nineteen years old, like yeah. or something <laughs> like that. It's like may as well be a, the pumpkin spice version of a Mike's Heart lemonade. Yeah, exactly. see, I had one the other day though that was like drinking like a, a workout smooth. Like I felt like I had pureed pumpkin in it. There was no sweet, no spice. Like they just made this mm-hmm. stuff with a lot of pumpkin. Just pumpkin. Which raw pumpkin's not a great flavor. It tastes like squash because yeah. it is one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so you got to have some of that molasses and 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 nutmeg mm-hmm. and cinnamon and and all those other spices without overdoing it on the sugar and uh, to make got, it good. In a they beer. got the seeds in there too. I like. I that. thought that was interesting too. They yeah. brew it with not only pumpkin but the pumpkin seeds as right. well. So you mm-hmm. get that extra extra nutty like. Mm-hmm night flavors going on that's really cool roasted and raw pumpkin seeds well you know this isn't exactly dark either i mean it's dark for an ale but it's not like it's a porter or a stout or something like it it truly is an ale brewed with pumpkin it's got an orange color to it yeah you could definitely get all of the pumpkin spices off of it yeah absolutely i mean this is something that i would 100 percent drink after you know a day shopping out at the mall pounding pumpkin spice lattes all day that's what I'm talking Gotta about. Gotta go home. It's the nighttime pumpkin spice yeah, latte. No, after a hard day of Ugg shopping, oh, yeah. there is nothing better to drink than this mm-hmm. beer. And then when you get home and you find out that the tights you've been wearing all day don't go see-through when you bend over, and oh, you're just super disappointed. Devastating. Oh. Yeah. Because oh. you're wearing your Hello Kitty boxers. Yeah. And then when you're... You, know, you want to show those off. Yeah. And with your white hoodie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. I'm going to have to go hooded vest on that one. There you go. Oh, yeah. you are in the heart of it, though. Yeah. I'm kind of... I yeah, live kind of on this, like, it takes a while for that to work out to where I live. I mean, I'm still about an hour away from Portland proper, but it is awfully Portland-y where I'm at well, now. I feel like Portland proper, proper comes to you, though. Oh, where 100%. You're at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're kind of out in the boonies here. You got to drive through a lot of agriculture, let me just put it that way. Your Uggs might get dirty <laughs> getting mm-hmm. here. Oh, no. That's why you wear your boots. You you change into your Uggs when you get in the house. That way you keep them clean. Speaking of Uggs, this reminds me of a an old Ugg story. <laughs> uh, it was kind of before I would realized my deep love for pumpkin spice. And me and a friend had gotten laid off from work. Actually, Steve. 
a mutual friend of me and Andy's. And we uh, we went out and we saw a movie. I don't remember what it was. Like Get Smart or one of those crappy movies. Got it in 3D just because we were just goofing off and had the 3D glasses. And then we're walking through the mall on our way back out. And those 3D glasses kind of make everything look a little weird. Like, and we're walking through maybe JC Penney's or something. And, you know, all the flower print actually makes the flower, like, pop out of the... And, and we're like, oh, it's so 3D, you know, and we're laughing and joking and having a good time. And I'm sure other people walking by just went, oh, wow, these two dudes in the Ray-Bans are super high. <laughs> you know, like, in my mind, I, I'm I'm guessing, but we're just kind of having a good time, just, just walking along, making jokes between each other about how 3D and it's coming right at me, you know. All this stuff, wearing those black 3D glasses. And uh, this this hipster looking chick and her Uggs and her friend just walk up behind us and just lays into us about how immature and dumb we are and stuff. And I was a little confused, like I was like, "What? You know what?" Steve, without missing a beat, just goes, "Nice Uggs," and turns around and walks away. <laughs> oh, God. He recognized, like he just he, turned like, that's around. That's all just, you have to say. Like, nice that's, Uggs. That's the only and, like, only chick, retort. Yeah, just totally silent, deep. Deep burning burn. <laughs> mm. Had to run out and find some aloe vera, right? I might, I might even break out the silver nitrate cream for that one. That's like... All right, as we finish our pumpkin spiced beers here, Kevin, part of the reason why we brought you on the show is because you're a bit of a barbecue man yourself. Uh, yeah, I've dabbled in and out of the professional career with, uh, with a little bit of barbecue. You were showing me some of the photos of, uh, one of the smokers you used to work with. That oh. thing is legit. Yeah. And I mean, you saw the picture of one. There were two of them side by side. Like, it's a lot of, a lot of meat I got to play with. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you say? It would fit 150 pounds of meat per smoker. Per smoker. Yeah. That, uh, six tray carousel inside. Yeah. Just keeping it all going. Those things, I love the look of those. And I'm sure, like, it, because restaurants use them, I'm sure they're among some of the best that you can get. I'm always looking at those going, how could I scale that down for something that's home use? You know what I'm talking about? Right, right. Man, I don't know how the hell you would. Like, they're the only reason you would need a big rotating rack smoker like that is for, for quantity. And at that point, you may as well just build a bigger solid, you know, not moving smoker. Mm. The more moving parts you have, obviously the more things there are that can break. I just feel like it's, it's better to just like, like the setup you've got out back with your indirect, your smoke box and everything like that. Like, honestly, that's what I would prefer for home use. But it just looks so much cooler that's, when all that stuff's moving saying. around. It, that's because it is cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it is gyroscope cooler. action. You yeah, know? but I mean, when are you ever going to barbecue 150 pounds of pork shoulder? I don't know, but Could I would just paint scale a big it down. Though I would, I would paint a big mural on the side of that smoker that says "The Meat Tornado." <laughs> oh yeah, that's meat, that's no. pretty much the only reason why I want that. I want you to try it this way. Meat Tornado is good. But I learned from Sharknado, adding NATO to the end of anything makes it sound a thousand times awesome. So how about just pork NATO? Now meat NATO or meat NATO? Yeah, actually, I like pork NATO. Pork NATO. I think that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Try it in your daily life, people. Just add NATO to the back half of regular words. Mm -hmm. You know, you're calling your dog, and you're just like, "Spark NATO here now." Mm -hmm. It sounds way better. Yeah, I'm getting paperwork in and put on my desk, right? So it's like a a paperwork NATO. That actually works. Yeah. Yeah, Koi's right. That works. It, it, yeah. I discovered this one day about a year ago, and uh, I don't apply it in my daily life enough, but when I do, I'm pleasantly surprised every time. You find new words. I like that. Yeah. Kevin, you can start doing that at work. Like, it's a knife NATO. <laughs> no, nah, don't do that. That's going to scare people away. <laughs> that does sound pretty horrifying, honestly. <laughs> knife NATO. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to hang out in that I'm restaurant. pretty sure there's a Redbox movie called that already. If there's not, there should be. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking you do it to, like, the menu. Just we have a little prosciutto NATO on top. <laughs> Pr Persimmon NATO. So would it be prosciutto NATO? <laughs> or would it be like Parma NATO or Ham NATO? Just you know, play with it. Yeah. Frog leg NATO. It'll come to the, the right one. Will come to the surface. Frog NATO leg NATO. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to stack them up too much. It's not a train here. I you mean, just want to insert one. Who's writing the rules at the right here? spot? I am. Well, I mean, what gives you the right? I am. I like. I invented what about this. Double NATO NATO. <laughs> Well, that makes it not a NATO if it's a double NATO. Mm. Yeah, because the vortexes have... cancel themselves out. 
So you can't really have a tornado NATO. No, no, no. That's a sh- that's a real shame. That seems like pretty sound logic. Unfortunately, yeah. We need to do something about that. These underprivileged tornadoes. I mean, they need to be lifted up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we could possibly have like a typhoon NATO. Oh yeah, cyclone NATO. Hurricane NATO. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Let's send in to uh, like the national hurricane, whatever, for the next name. Right, and if you're in South, would it? Would if if you're in Southeast Asia, would it be a, a typhoon NATO? I yeah. think so. Anything right? in the Pacific is a typhoon NATO. Typhoon NATO, <laughs> or a, or what about a monsoon NATO? Yeah, monsoon NATO. I'll tell you though, if it's a typhoon NATO, that's when you start putting the nets out on the roof of your apartment building. Because that's where the fish are going to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, getting back to uh, your time in a barbecue restaurant. This, sure. This was in uh, California, yes? Uh, yeah, Silicon Valley, San Jose. What was it like being in a restaurant like that where you were trimming 150 briskets in a day? Yeah, it's hell on the joints, man. Like, I'm pretty sure that's where most of my carpal tunnel came from. Because, like, although it is a lot of work, it's the same thing over and over so you talk about repetitive motion like mm-hmm. i mean i can trim a brisket and separate the lean and fatty lobe with my eyes shut now but i definitely feel it like it's one of the hazards of the job is just that repetitive motion thing but man like so much meat like i don't even know how to explain it like we'd get deliveries three times a week and it's just boxes and boxes of briskets and pork shoulders and racks of ribs it's just out of control so you're That's crazy. you're physically loading 600 pounds of meat in these smokers per day by yourself or? uh busy busy weekends yeah we'd probably do somewhere around there but uh that's a workout yeah I mean, yes that's, that's like filling up a moving truck yeah i mean i don't know if you've seen me but i'm pretty oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know. have a massive app yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's uh you know it's definitely physically taxing the industry in general i don't know if many people outside know but it is such a physically exhausting job as well as you know like you you hear about oh it's really stressful there's a lot going on you got to be really focused but just the sheer like standing in one spot or not walking around a whole lot in and of itself is pretty exhausting just standing there you hear a lot of a lot of chefs get like feet problems lower back problems thankfully i'm kind of short so i don't hunch too bad over the Mm -hmm. over the cutting board or anything but Lower back issues is like huge in the industry. I developed lower back issues working for uh, my parents' little pizza place because it was all concrete floors. Oh, yeah. And I mean, standing on them for somewhere between four and 10 hours a day since I was 12 years old. Yeah, it really did a number on my feet. Yeah, it'll mess you up if you're not careful. And you hear everybody talking about like, oh, you got to get these shoes or, you know, everyone's there's the, the big three or uh, Birkenstocks, Dance Co's. Or Doc Martens. Interesting. Yeah. And I've, I've never subscribed to that. I always go to Walmart or Fred Meyer now that I'm up here in the great Northwest and I just buy the 39.99, whatever cheap shoes. And Whatever's got thick soles though. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'd like to, I like to heavily, uh, lobby for better mats to stand on. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah is, yeah. is the big one. And I've been been lucky that uh, I haven't even had to do do that so much in the in the last couple of jobs I've been at. They just know and they have good mats or good floors. So, yeah, yeah those mats make a huge difference. Even cheap mats. I when I was high school aged, I worked at a at a cannery, you know, green beans and whatnot. And when you first start out there, summer job, you always what they call the belt, just a conveyor belt full of raw green beans, and you pick out. You know, little sticks or whatever. Oh, yeah, I think sorting yeah, or whatever. Yeah, what you just, you. and yeah, I mean, just eight hours just standing there, bent over this belt, and uh, they had mats, basically just welcome mats they'd give people to use. But if you didn't use one, like even as a 16 year old, I would, I could physically feel a difference by the time the first break rolled around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes a big difference. Yeah, even the mm-hmm. tiniest little thin, thin layer of padding really, really does help. And I, I don't know if it's just, you would think as you get older, too like you know you'd be more susceptible or more sensitive to stuff like that Mm -hmm. i'm not sure if that's the case i feel like now it just doesn't even bother me like i could stand on a concrete floor all day no big deal and just not even think about it well it's probably because you're in so much pain that it just doesn't even really make a difference (laughs) right i'm just just used to it they're just (laughs) shot yeah they're just done for no coming back it's like i when you, you know, you've lived in the desert all your life, this dust doesn't even, you know, as I get older, it bothers me less. And it's like, well, that's because your nose and lungs are broken. 
Right. Yeah, it's good. Right. Cuz cuz your lungs work 30% less than they did before. Yeah, you're already rife with tuberculosis. So, <laughs> yeah. it's like who cares? Exactly. All right. On the subject of tuberculosis, lungs are feeling a little dusty here. I could use a drink. What's our next beer? Uh, how about we go with something not like what we just had? How about some more pumpkin beer? <laughs> Another one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got some uh dark shire. Wait. Oakshire seasonal release. Big Black Jack. Ooh. Yeah. I love this beer. Also one that neither of you guys have had before. Correct. No. It is an Imperial Pumpkin Porter. And you know me. I love my dark beers. It's so black. It is very, very black. I was not expecting. I'm pouring. And foamy. I'm pouring some like motor oil out of this thing. Seriously, that looks like blown head gasket right there. That peanut butter on top. Yeah, no joke. Oh. It's going to be pumpkin spiced motor oil. So you've had this before, though, Andy. I have, and I love it, so I can't wait to drink it. Kevin's face, I don't know. I'm not sure if he likes it. He's leaning around making some funky moves. That, I don't know, that, that first one is a tough act to follow. It is. That's why I wanted to start with it, though, because the quality of the basic in that beer. You know what I mean? Right. Like it just, it's got the Uggs, it's got the tights, it's got the puffy vest, it, it's got it all. You know, this is not a, it's not a bad beer, but if you didn't tell me, if it didn't have pumpkin on the bottle, and you put any other wrapper on that thing and poured it, I don't know that I would go, oh, this tastes like it has pumpkin in it. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree with it's, you, It's Coy. got some kind of, some holiday spicy kind of on the even, finish. Well, but, I'm not even sure it's got any pumpkin in it. I think it might just be pumpkin spiced. Yeah, if I mean, if you handed this to me and said it's a cinnamon stout, I'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. No, oh, no, it says it's got pumpkin, cocoa, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and allspice. I can taste the nutmeg, but yeah, yeah I'm not, the pumpkin, I'm know. not really getting out of it. I feel it. like I got a fever, and the only cure is more pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Speaking of allspice, my whole life, I thought allspice was like a blend of a bunch of different spices. They berries, bro. They're actually a plant called allspice. Yeah, allspice berries. Yeah, no, I was in Hawaii, and we met some people that said they had a farm orchard thing, and we're like, well, let's check it out. And they invited us to their house, and we went over there. They're like, this is an allspice tree. And I was like, uh, so is it like 10 different spices crafted on here? <laughs> they're like, no, crunch up a leaf and smell it. And I was like, huh? yeah, it smells like allspice. In that moment, I felt kind of dumb, but a little smarter at the same time. Yeah, you had a, the more you know moment. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, hang on, we can do this. We can do this. <laughs> Good job, Coy. The more you know. So you don't like this beer. Neither of you guys like this beer. I mean, I'm going to drink it. <laughs> yeah, I just... I don't not like it. When you drink this, mm -hmm. you don't think of Uggs and hoodies and, and, a, and a long Starbucks line. Right. No, this is like... this is. This is like the pumpkin spice latte you get out of that powdered cocoa dispenser mm -hmm. at the 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not like a bad beer, but if I had covered the front, you would have gone, oh, it's got a little cinnamon clove in it. That's kind of fun. Yeah. But since you were expecting a pumpkin spiced beer, this is not flying. No, it's not no. doing it for no, me. No, no, no. Now, if this just said like seasonal or holiday or Thanksgiving mm -hmm. stout, I'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad. But when you throw a big black jack i'm thinking some halloween pumpkin going on here this thing needs to have a little candy corn or something in it and it is it is lightly spiced mm -hmm. i hear you i feel you well look guys if we're not a fan of this beer i think it's time to just move on let's go all the way to the top all right We've got some new holland brewing dragon's milk bourbon barrel aged stout this one's not pumpkin anything. It's not pumpkin stout. It's not uh, pumpkin spiced. It's it's none of that. It's just a really, really good beer that neither of you guys have had, correct? Correct. Yes. So we're going to see what we feel about this. I'm just making the assumption, by the way, that Kevin has an advanced palate because he is a professional chef. That may be an incorrect assumption. I mean, I'd like to think I have an advanced palate. I'm hoping you do, too, because you seem to like my food quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, hard to screw up heritage pork. That is very true. That is very you true. You got to really try. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, those chops earlier, man. 
Who? Cook to medium. Yeah. Medium. And you know, I hate, I hate this terminology, but I'm going to use it. I would even call that medium rare plus, <laughs> which is the stupidest thing ever, but. Well, it's not. That's like yeah. a medium rare. That's not that's just like just a little past medium rare, but not quite medium. It's like one of those things that people, you know, like you got to you got an order in and you just want to go kill the person. Like, that's why they have me in the back, because if somebody ordered a steak for me, medium rare plus, I'd be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> that's that doesn't exist. You but, should. But outside those confines of the restaurant now sitting here talking to you guys, like, I mean, I feel like it's a real thing. I would just never ask for that because it's stupid. Right, right. I'm with you. You should change it up and, and do it into the gun world. They have like, well, yeah, this is nine mil ammo plus P. It's, it's <laughs> loaded over a little bit, you know? <laughs> oh. So you should be like, yeah, this is uh, medium rare plus P. And then you can like get two separate groups to look at you and be like, what is he talking about? No, that sounds that sounds pretty awesome. I like that. Dragon's milk. Love this stuff. What are we thinking? I get a lot of roasty toasty. There it's a little bit alcohol forward. I feel like that bourbon barrel aging is coming through, which I like. I'm oh, a yeah. big fan of that. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm smelling it, you can definitely smell the bourbon barrel age going on in really, there. It really does smell sweet almost. Yep, yep. It tastes sweet. It's a big beer. It's a it's a very big beer. It's got a little sour note going on at the end there that, that works, though. Mm hmm See, Kevin, he can't decide what he thinks of it. If he really likes it, he's he's on some weird, like, love-hate thing I can see going I mean, on in his face. I do like it. Mm -hmm. It is really tasty. You're just trying to assess what exactly is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm See, the thing about Koi and I is that we just dump it down our gullets and then, you know, give it a three count and decide if it's good or not. Whereas you get someone that has a refined palate and they're sitting there going, what are those flavors that I'm tasting? Mmm. There's oak. There's vanilla. I'm getting some tannin. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. It's a really like snooty, fancy pants like yeah, process yeah. that I'm going through here. I can't just enjoy food or beer anymore. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's one of the drawbacks. <laughs> yeah. I just, I take a big swig of it kind of mm, sweet belch. <laughs> right. <You know. laughs> yeah, people people uh friend, get friend, friends and family hate cooking for me now because they know they're always gonna get, you know, uh examined and and criticized and like even if I don't, you know, have anything to say about it, they know I do and I'm just being polite. So it's a struggle. Well fortunately for them you are polite. It depends on who I'm talking to. When you're <laughs> when you're a professional cook and other people are cooking for you and then now they won't, it's like, oh no. If only I could cook my own delicious food somehow. You know, True story. Just give me a gift card. Stop cooking me crappy yeah. lemon bars. You know what's funny, though, is uh, so I cook all day, and I go home. I live not with a significant other or anything. My roommates have real adult jobs, so they're in bed by the time I get home. So I'm cooking for one most mm. nights. My usual dinner is a bottle of Yoohoo <laughs> and uh and one of those microwave gas station burritos. Yeah, so I got man. I got no time. Like I got to get some food in me and go to bed. Yeah, that's all my buddies that were into cars when I was younger, and they're like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna go to school and be a mechanic." And I'd be like, "So you're gonna hate working on? You're gonna hate the thing you love here in, in another three years? You right. know, like mm -hmm. you're gonna work at cars all day and you know come home and look at your piles of crap that need twice as much work that right. you used to love and just be like, no, yeah, I'm not like even right now. Professional I'm, mechanics never yep. work on their own cars. Netflix. Professional cooks yep. very rarely cook for themselves. The carpenter's home is the worst on the block, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, fortunately, you were able to come here and give us suggestions on how to cook. I really appreciate that. The smoked egg yolks for those deviled eggs, that uh, was a genius idea. That was clutch. The wife made some hard-boiled duck eggs, and we were going to make deviled eggs. And, Koi, you got a few of them, too. Mm, yeah, I got more than a few. <laughs> yeah, you did. Kevin suggested that we take those egg yolks and put them in a pan and stick them in the smoker for like 10 or 15 minutes just to get a little bit of that smoky flavor on them. And, man, that picked up so much flavor. I was shocked. Your wife had the really good idea, too, to, like, bust them up a little bit, too, because mm -hmm. I was thinking, it's like, oh, we'll just throw them in their hole, no big deal, and sh they wouldn't, they, you, that little pan she had them all stacked up in was kind of, like, confining them, like, they wouldn't all be exposed. She's like, what if I just lay them out on the sheet pan and seem like, crumbling them up? It's like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. More surface area, more smoke, less time, so they're not going to 
sit and overcook or get all mm -hmm. grainy and, and gross. And I mean, they were just good eggs to begin with. I mean, I had one fried over medium before we even even got into the hard boiling process. And man, was that thing tasty. Medium oh, plus. Yeah. Yeah, medium, <laughs> medium plus. Medium plus. <laughs> medium plus. Yeah, that was, that was definitely, I mean, duck eggs are, as far as I'm concerned, the egg. Like, that's the egg that all other eggs are compared to. And it was fantastic. Surprising amount of people don't realize that duck eggs are like the ultimate in egg technology. They really are. <laughs> like, cause I grew up raising, raising ducks and like they taste better. They're generally bigger. So you get a little more quantity. They're better for baking. Like they have no downside other than they're a little harder to crack. Right. Yeah, the membrane's a little a little yeah. thicker too, so they're a little harder to crack, a little harder to peel, but with the right technique, mm -hmm. pretty manageable. I like that technique that you showed us today, where you crack just just around the center, mm -hmm. and you make a line all the way around with your peelings, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of loosen the ends off, and they come right off. That was genius. Yeah, well, we do uh, we do egg shooters at uh, at the Dew at Recipe Part Dew, so I, I peel a lot of boiled eggs mm -hmm. a couple times a week. So you gotta, egg shooters, egg, yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a deviled egg. Okay. It's a fancied up deviled egg, but yeah. it's a deviled egg. It's like you, know what you could do you could serve those on a hatchet, <laughs> egg shooter hatchet NATO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's a, that is the one thing that I, I do love about deviled eggs is there's a same amount of flavor. They're soft. You can throw them back. They're not in your mouth for five minutes. You can be talking, slam one of those, get a ton of flavor, and keep talking. Yeah. Like, they're the ultimate stand-around BS with your buddies and just throw back delicious flavor, especially after you smoked it. So a little bacon on there. It was like this hickory, this shot of, like, hickory, eggy, bacony, just amazing. The bacon. Mm -hmm. That little bacon lardone stuck right in there on the top was perfect yeah because mm -hmm. you slam it back you chew like four times and you're just swallowing all the smoky goodness you're left with a little bacon in the mouth just to wrap up all that flavor yeah. they were so good yeah they were really really tasty i i will say i was a little surprised at how good they were because that is a rich yolk you know those duck eggs are a very rich yolk and then adding smoke on top of that mm -hmm. i thought man that might be a little bit overpowering, but somehow Coriander was able to just nail those flavors. Yeah, they were really, really well balanced. I feel like that there's a little bit more mustard in there mm -hmm. than you would have in a typical uh, typical deviled egg, but with all of the extra smoke and the extra richness from those uh, from those duck egg yolks, really the little extra acid in that mustard helped balance everything out and bring it all around. Now, what did you think about our fire cooked? cabbage oh man we did fried red cabbage we did part of it on the grill where i just cranked it up to 500 degrees smoked with cherry wood and pecan wood over some mesquite charcoal yeah that was absolutely fantastic and i mean i'm not one generally that likes braised just braised cabbage mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm pretty german i like my sauerkraut but that cabbage was amazing smoked and I'm going to play around with some smoked sauerkraut now, I think. I feel like might now be a, might be a nice idea. Like, let it ferment first mm -hmm. and then hit it with the caraway and everything like that and throw it in the smoker for a little bit and see how that turns out. We'll do a little playing with that at work. I like that a lot, especially if you're using a flat skillet mm -hmm. on, on a wood-fired grill, something mm -hmm. that you could close and let that smoke kind of get around and, and let it get a little sizzle and char on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I buy that. I dig that. Yeah. And I mean, like the sour, you do sauerkraut, you cut your cabbage like extra thick instead of like finely shredding it. You'll retain a little bit of that crunch mm -hmm. so it can stand up to being cooked again. Cause you know, sauerkraut, when you get that super shave stuff, like, you know, that everyone buys out of the jar or the can or whatever, it's already so cooked or so processed that it's like, if you were to bring, try and cook that at all again, it just turned to mush. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like doing a nice big broad cut on that stuff would maybe help out with that a little bit. I'm wondering if you did a smoked sauerkraut and it turned out, how would that be over a sausage on a bun? Oh, probably amazing. I would think so. Yeah, like with some curry worst sauce, like some curry ketchup, mm -hmm. smoked sausage. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad. Because you're bringing that smoked flavor in. You're not necessarily grilling the sausages. Right. But Koi's already rolling his eyes back in his head, so I think he's imagining I'm, what it's going to taste like. I'm thinking because... I was thinking about, you know, a smoky sausage with more smoke, and then I was like, w why would you go for something and just boil it, you know, and then hit it with the uh, smoked sauerkraut? It could be really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
What's that white sausage that's boiled? Oh, oh, God. The fondue Germany one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a really s- weird smell. Something worst. It's not knock worst. It's whatever the German word for white is, mm-hmm. followed by the word worst. <laughs> <laughs> Blanco worst. I knew I should have known this because it's after the flower to vice first or weiss worst. Oh, okay. Weiss first, yeah. yeah. Weiss first. Yeah. Boil some of that up. Hit it with a real smoky, yeah, yeah. real smoky sauerkraut. Be yeah, really good. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling that. Man, that feels like it's perfect for Oktoberfest. Yeah. Oh man, I've still got the remnants of Oktoberfest in my mind <laughs> from Mount Angel. <laughs> did you make it over to that? I did. How was it? Oh man, it was incredible. So much sausage, <laughs> so much spetzel and schnitzel and. They have the the super old Glockenspiel and everything mm-hmm. up and running. I mean, they're, I'm kind of antisocial. I don't like large groups but of people. But you like the big sausages? But I love the big sausages. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Hell yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of meat, when is that uh, that pulled pork going to be done without cooking right now? Oh, I need to check it right after we're done uh, recording the episode. Yeah, I feel like the that shoulder and those ribs are probably pretty close. Probably but, those ribs are super meaty though. They're taking some extra time. They, you know, you said you said they're baby backs, mm-hmm. and I trust you. But man, they were meaty. They were huge. I, I figured they were St. Louis, like for sure. They're not St. Louis. They're definitely a baby back cut. But there's a lot of meat that was left on them. Okay. I don't know exactly why. I've never had these before. There was something that I got at Safeway. They're not part of the heritage breed hog, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, they should still be pretty good. But yeah, they're just, they're super thick and super meaty. So they're just, they're taking their time. Fair. But I think, I think we'll be nailing it just about right if we uh, unwrap them after we're done with the show. So speaking of, now that I've said that, these guys are going to want me to wrap it up quick. But we've got one more thing to do, guys. We've got our smoking dealer smoking a dube. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm so ready. (laughs) I gotta say, (laughs) I'm... (laughs) This thing I want is ridiculous. This so bad. <laughs> this is awesome. So bad. Like it's called the Mega Ace four by four diesel and uh, apparently spaceship window van. That's a technical term. It spaceship is tec- window. I yeah, I yeah. do know that the guys these Toyotas and then I think it's a Mitsubishi Pajero makes a similar four wheel drive van and and everybody calls them spaceships. Yeah. Well, I mean they look they look like a spaceship. This, this one's one, got though. a little bit of a lift on it. It's got bigger tires. It's got that classic three-color zigzag down the side. That TRD logo, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice. Is that a TRD logo? Yeah, I'm pretty on there? sure that's TRD. Those those three colors: the yellow, orange, and poo brown. Mm-hmm. That's I'm pretty sure that's quintessential TRD. It's got some pretty aggressive tires on it too. Did you yeah. guys notice that? I did. And like I was telling you guys earlier, this thing it looks like it came right out of that old off-road challenge video game. That we all sat on when we were kids in the Walmart lobby. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? We yes. thought we were driving it, even though it was just the cutscene going on. But it looks like it came right out of there. I, I would love to see it on there and drive it. Like, I, I want this bad. That's got these windows that wrap around on the side to the roof. I, I don't know the function, but, man, it looks cool. It's got a really nice lift on it. I'm sorry, is that a spoiler I'm spying up on the mm-hmm. back, too? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And do you see that mirror? Oh. Yeah. You need to back right up to something. <laughs> I mean, you need to get really close. You look in your rearview mirror to that mirror and straight down at your bumper. Look at the air underneath of that chassis. That is incredible. That's a lot of clearance, even from the bottom of that rear diff. I'm guessing those are like 30s or 31s. They're not. They're not very big, but... Yeah, this thing is up there. <laughs> I, I I want it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. Can we can we get back to the front end of that car? Because I swear to God, the headlights on this thing almost look like the front end of that car could be the rear end of a Porsche 928. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We put like some red in between the headlights. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just yeah. clip clip it off like right at the window mm-hmm. like, with your hand or whatever. It looks exactly like an old Porsche. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. You know, if this thing wasn't nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, it would be awesome to get one and see if you could just flip it on the frame. Oh, drive it backwards and just drive it backwards so that you're actually you know driving down the road with your headlights pointing the wrong way and just freak people out and stuff. Oh man, 
That sounds I'll like. just look at it inside. That thing looks so awesome. Huge windows. The windows on the roofs. On the roof of that. So, do they have a manufacturer year on this thing? Like, is, I'd like to, if, if they don't, I'd like to guess. Well, no, we've already yeah. read it. Uh, it's 91. 91? Yeah. I love this. Blade Runner meets Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Through a company Blue. called Yoda Imports. Cheap shipping available. A Toyota Light Ace is the actual brand or, or model number. 1991, right-hand drive, five-speed manual, 116,000 kilometers, 73,000 miles. Oh, it's right-hand drive, huh? Yeah. No, oh, they didn't man. make those here. I don't don't believe like that. And the Mega Ace 2 with roof windows, probably our most unique unit ever, featured on several social media outlets all over the world. Our in-house design stripes and wrap make this vehicle unique as a one-of-a-kind. Equipped with brand new PFG tires, full service on the engine, new shock suspension, this Mega Ace is ready to roam the earth. So it's got the 2CT engine, and those are pretty well known. They're very durable. It's one of Toyota's diesel offerings. They come in these vans. They come in small pickup trucks. They're very universal. The parts are everywhere, and they're supposed to last forever. Just, just run and run and run. So I feel like that would be a good value for the truck. You're probably not going to have a lot of engine issues that you need to worry about. Fair, but would you pay $20,000 for like a medium mileage old Volvo 240? Because those things will run forever too, but they're not worth no 20 grand. If it was a rare four-wheel drive imported version? Ooh. With those roof windows? Or a Bertone, maybe? <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. just... I- Nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety dollars is an insane price yeah. for a micro van. But if I were twenty years old and I was going to do like a tour of the United States before I went to college, <laughs> and my dad had some money, this might be the vehicle I had to go. Like you, my dad said, I can get you a a Sprinter van or this. I think I'm going with this. Oh, I would take this over a Sprinter all day. Yeah, I mean this thing is awesome. Hundred percent. Well, so what do we think, you guys? Is this a smoking deal or are they smoking a dube? <laughs> They're smoking a doobie deal. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of transcending. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the smoking a dube. It is such a niche vehicle and it's super cool, but $20,000. I mean, by the pound, this is a terrible deal. <laughs> I, will, I will say that. But the cool factor. Oh, you're going to be getting, people are going to be checking this thing out everywhere. I mean, it even has a roof window. Above those driver seats, the driver seat roof window well, like, is that's pretty insane. sweet. Like it's at an angle, uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's so cleaned up too and refined looking. Like this looks like it could have come from the factory almost. Even with the lift and the knobbies and everything like that, it's very well done. Mm-hmm. I feel like the only reason it's not a hundred percent smoking a dube is because of the build quality of this thing. It just looks so perfect and well put together. I agree with that. Well, folks, we're somewhat undecided here. I, I think we're like 75% smoking a dube, 25% smoking a deal. I got one solution. And if this that won't work, then I'm going to let the listeners decide. We get, uh, we call Ace Imports here. We tell them the only way we can decide if smoking a deal or smoking a dube is they need to jump it like a skateboard at the X Games <laughs> and send a video to us. And then we'll just, then we'll know definitively one way or the other. But if, if that that email falls through, Andy, then you just let the listeners decide. Okay. All right. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, so, listeners, make sure that you're using the hashtag smoking deal or the hashtag smoking a dube. And let us know what you think. And let's see if we can get a little air underneath of the tires of this thing. You know, let's, let's put a little pressure out there on yodaimports.com and see if they will take this thing out to the dunes. Kevin, you got anything you want to plug, my friend? I'd love everybody that's listening to come to my restaurant and our sister restaurant here in Newburgh. That'd be recipe or recipe part do, depending on your uh, dining experience that you're uh, you're looking for. But well, if you're that's, that's looking pretty much for the, it. if you're looking for the good dining experience with Kevin, you're definitely going to part de. You want part de for sure if you're going to see me. But if, cool. if if you're looking for something a little more formal, like something you want to take your parents to, or 
you know, super hot date, definitely going to want to check out the other restaurant as well. They got a lot of fun stuff and uh, our menus are completely different. So we got different stuff at, you know, both sites. So nice. So we, it's, it's really fun. We like our diversity. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe this hour flew by so fast. I mean, we didn't get into your car history. We didn't get into your racing. Going to have to have you back on. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I'm not too far away. No, no. We'll do another one here real soon. By popular demand, I'm sure. Koi, where can people find you? Overland Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. Make sure you're going and checking that out. We got an episode coming out here real soon. Koi's getting up and going and can't wait to check that out. And, of course, you can find us at Facebook.com slash Boost Booze BBQ. All the social media is at Boost Booze BBQ. And... BoostBoozeBBQ.com. Head on over while you're at it to BoostBoozeBBQ.com slash pardon my fork. Check out the sister show. We're getting ramped up for the World Food Championships. So make sure that you're going over there and checking that out. And thank you so much for listening. And Kevin, Coy, thanks for being here, fellas. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Had a great time. And Can't we will. Do it again. And you will do it again. You'll do it every time. Yes. Koi, Koi is my second chair from here on out. I mean, unless Kevin says, I don't want Koi in the second chair anymore, and then I'm going to be like, Koi, you're out. Aww. Unless anyone else wants to do it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> three's, three's company, right? That's exactly it. Three's company, too. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time. Boost Booze and Barbecue.